what's going on everybody welcome to a new video on the normal distribution in this video we're going to start well actually this video is the start of a series on videos over the normal distribution and this one's going to focus on the normal function all right so first off the normal function is a function but it can only be used when a large set of quantitative data is said to be normally distributed which means it's unimodal and symmetric and remember when you're working with data and you have a model, especially one that's going to follow the normal model, there are a couple things that are super important. First, the mean. The mean completely dictates the center of your model. The mean is the center. The standard deviation measures how much your data spreads, how far your data is from the mean. And that's a very important number that dictates how spread out your model is. Now, the one thing that keeps all of this universal is what we call a z-score. A z-score is also known as a standardized score. A z-score is simply how many standard deviations a particular value is from the mean. So the z-score formula is to take your particular value, which I'll just call x for genericity right now, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So in terms of z-scores, the mean is zero because the mean is zero from itself. So in a generic normal model, we're going to see a zero as a z-score right smack dab in the middle that represents the mean. Then when we go up one standard deviation, that's literally one. That's a z-score of one. One standard deviation above the mean is one standard deviation above the mean. Then we go to three. And likewise, we go down negative one, down negative two, down negative three. Now, there is data outside of three and negative three, but it's extremely unlikely. It's extremely low chance of occurring. It's why we just don't show it. So technically this does go towards infinity and this does go towards negative infinity, but it's just not worth us even going remotely lower than negative three and three because there's such very little data above that. And that's the whole point of what the normal model shows us is that most data is really close to the mean. That's why we see this big chunk, this high proportion of data near the mean. And the further we get away, the less and less likely that data becomes. Simple, easy. Now, underneath this normal model is one. 100% 1 of your data is below this curve. We just see that a larger proportion of that data is near the mean, and smaller proportions are really low, and smaller proportions are really high. That's the whole point of what the normal model represents. So as long as you are normally distributed, uh, you have a mean, you're unimodal, and you're symmetric, we follow this concept, this idea. And all that's really needed is the mean and the standard deviation. Because with the mean and standard deviation, we could get the z-score. And that z-score allows everything to tie into this normal model. So keep all that in mind as we continue to talk today. Now, what's the normal function? A normal function is a function that helps us find areas in this model. Let's talk a little bit more about that. So, you know, keep in mind a function, right? Functions have inputs. Functions have outputs. Go back to your days in Algebra 1. Inputs, outputs. So in a normal function, we have inputs, we have outputs. So what are the inputs? The input is a range of z-scores starting at a lower value and ending at an upper value. The output is a proportion or probability or percent, it's all the same thing, of data that has a z-score in that range. All right, let me go back to this picture and kind of explain that in a little bit more detail. All right, so... If we have a range of z-scores, let's just say a z-score of exactly negative 2 to a z-score of exactly 1, and that's the input, right? The input to the normal function is a range of z-scores, a lower, in this case negative 2, to an upper, in this case 1. The output is going to be the proportion, the percentage, or the probability of data falling in that range. So again, input, range of z-scores, Lower to higher, lower to upper. Output is a proportion of data. Pretty simple. Now, how? How does this happen? Like, what is this function doing that it's taking a range of z-scores, boop, 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 and it's outputting a proportion of data between those z-scores? Well, to be honest, that's some pretty advanced calculus, which you do not need to know for sake of this video, for sake of this lesson. So don't worry about how am I getting the answer, just worry about the fact that you have, or be thankful, I guess, that you have a calculator that could get this for you. The function, the normal function on our calculator, if you have a TI-84 calculator, is called normal CDF, 
What it does is once again, it takes lower z-score to an upper z-score. So it takes a range of two z-scores and it outputs a proportion of data that is in that z-score range. Let's show you exactly how it works by looking at several examples. All right, this first example wants us to find the proportion, percentage, probability, that P can stand for three different things, of z-scores greater than 1.5. Okay, so if I create that normal model, in fact, I'm not going to do this for every problem because this video will be two hours long, but just for sake of this first problem, if I go and find a z-score of 1.5, that's right here, and I want to find the proportion of data greater than it, that's exactly what I'm looking for right there, that section of data right there, that proportion, that percentage. All right, so the question is, how do I find it? Well, get ready, this is beyond easy. So you're going to go to your calculator. You're going to hit second, V-A-R-S is actually the distribution list, so second distribution, and we're going to grab the normal CDF command. Notice it gives a lower to an upper. So our lower, we always got to go left to right. So lower would be our 1.5, and the upper would be, well, if you go back to my picture that I drew, uh, the upper is would be like infinity, right? It, it's going up forever. Don't just go to three, because again, I know that I stopped at a z-score of three on my picture, but data really does go higher than it, just not a whole lot. So I use 99 to act like, a, like an infinity. Um, in fact, a 99 kind of looks like an infinity if you take away the tails of the nine. Okay, I know it's stupid, but again, I'm just trying to say, listen, we want to go 1.5 really, really, really high. And then we just want to paste this into our home screen, hit enter, and there it is, 0.0668. 0.0668. So if I go back to the picture, the section I shaded right here in yellow represents 6.68% of all the z-scores. 6.68% of all the data would have a z-score greater than 1.5. All right, let's do another one here. This one says find the percentage, find the probability, find the proportion of data that has a z-score lower than 2.4. Okay, lower, less than, less than 2.4. All right, so once again, I'm going to grab my calculator, second vars here, go and grab the normal CDF command. So now this time I want to go lower than 2.4. So I'm actually going to start at negative 99. That's acting as my negative infinity way to the left, and I'm going to go to an upper value of 2.4. You always have to go lower to upper. And listen, if it helps you to draw this picture every single time, most kids are going to be like, nope, I don't want to draw a picture every single time. But for some students, it really does help. So find 2.4, there it is, about right there. Again, you don't have to be rough. And then say, okay, I'm trying to find the percentage below it, the proportion below it. So now I'm thinking again, I got to go lower to upper. Lower would be way down here at negative 99. And my upper value that I'd end with is 2.4. You always got to go left to right. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead here and hit paste and Sorry, I hit paste twice, 0.992. And again, if you go back and look at that picture, my shaded region was a lot. So it makes sense that it's, it's almost 100%, 99.2%. All right, let's do another one here. This one is going to be greater than negative 1.25. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and grab my normal CDF here. Greater than, so I'm going to actually start at the negative 1.25. And I'm going to go to 99. So I'm going from my, my initial value of negative 1.25 on the left to an upper value of infinity, essentially. And I get 0 0.894. 0 0.894. And one more to go here, less than 0 0.26. I'm going to go less than 0 0.26. So let's see here. A lot of kids ask, by the way, oh, what if it was a less than or equal to sign? The normal model does not differentiate. A less than sign is no different than a less than or equal to sign in the eyes of the normal model. Okay, so... 0.26, less than 0.26. So less than means I'm going to start at a lower value of negative 99, and I'm going to go to an upper value of 0.26. That way I'm looking left, negative 99, negative infinity, up to a right value of 0.26. And I get 0 0.603, 0 0.603. All right, now there are three or four more examples on this page here. Why don't you go ahead and try them right now? I'm going to um, go ahead and just put the answers up. You could pause the video right now, and then as soon as you hit play, you'll see that the answers are there for you to check your work. And boom, there are the answers. For number five, we have 0 0.00193. Notice how I kept three significant digits. Those first two don't count as significant digits. Those first two zeros. Uh, number six, I had 0 0.860. 
number 7.910, and number 8.240. All right, hopefully you got those right. All right, now let's look at some problems that are not just generic. They're actual, actual like context, right? There's, there's an actual problem going on here. So the weight of female tortoises on the Galapagos Islands follows a normal distribution. If it didn't say that, I could not do this problem whatsoever. So thank goodness it says that. All right, with a mean of 250 pounds, so the mean weight of these turtles is 250 pounds, and a standard deviation of 22.4 pounds. All right, what is the probability that a random female tortoise weighs more than 275 pounds? So the question, I like to always write the, what the question's asking in notation. So I'm asked to find the P for probability that a turtle weighs more than 275 pounds. Now the problem is, in its current format, I actually can't answer the question because my calculator, the normal function on my calculator, only understands the universal language of z-scores. That's the cool thing. Anything with a mean instant deviation could be put onto a z-score scale. So that's why the only thing the calculator understands is z-score. So the very first thing I'm going to do is find the z-score for this turtle. So I'm going to grab my calculator here. I'm going to take 275 minus 250, hit enter first, always do that numerator first, then divide by the standard deviation of 22.4, so my z-score is 1.116. So now, the similar question in terms of like what we were just practicing is the probability that a z-score is greater than 1.116. So here we have the question in context, a turtle weighing over 275 pounds, here is the same question in terms of a z-score, and that's what I'm allowed to do on my calculator. So on my calculator, I'm going to go and grab normal CDF. Because we want to look greater, I'm going to start at a lower value of the 1.116, and I'm going to go all the way towards 99. That's acting as my infinity. I accidentally typed in 999. doesn't matter. You can even do 9. I just like to do 99 to really emphasize really, really high. And I get 0.132. So 13.2% of turtles, female turtles on the Galapagos Islands, weigh more than 275 pounds. There's a 13.2% probability that we would find a random turtle that weighs over 275 pounds. All right, let's do another one here. What is the probability that a random female turtle weighs less than 185? So the probability that a turtle is less than 185 pounds. Once again, calculator can't do anything with that. The calculator can, however, do something with the z-score. So let me go to my calculator here, find that z-score, so 185 minus 250, hit enter first, divide by the 22.4 standard deviation, and I get negative 2.02. Negative, so again, my z-score is negative 2. Point, I already I have such a bad short-term memory, 902, negative 2.02. 902. Very low z-score, by the way. So again, that's a probability that a z-score is less than negative 2.902. And now that's where I could go to my calculator to actually get this answer. So I'm going to go to my distribution here. I want to look lower, so I'm actually going to start at negative 99. I'm going to go to that value of negative 2.02. And I get, let's see here, get paste, 0 0.00185. Those first two zeros don't count as significant digits, so I do want to have three significant digits, so that's why I rounded 2.00185. So it'd be pretty rare, be pretty unlikely to find a female tortoise on the Galapagos Islands that weighed less than 185 pounds. All right, one more to go here. Find the probability that a female tortoise weighs between 240 and 255 pounds. So now we're going in between. And notice I'm using a T. I'm using a T for tortoise. You could use an F for female. You could use a W for weight. You could even use a generic X if you want. But just know that you cannot type those numbers into your calculator. The normal function only needs Z-scores. So now I have to do a little bit more work because I have to find the Z-score for 240 first. So I'm going to take 240 minus 250 divided by 22.4, and that is a z-score of negative 0.446. Then I have to find the z-score for 255, so 255 minus 250, divided by 22.4, that's a z-score of 0.223.
And now I'm looking at finding the z-score or the probability, the proportion of data between a z-score of negative 0.446 and 0.223. And again, it's really important to understand this first statement here is in context to what the question asks. This statement is actually the same question, but in terms of z-scores, that's the universal language, and that's what my calculator understands. So I'm going to go to second vars here, grab the normal CDF command. So I'm going to go from negative 0.446 as my low to my upper value of 0.223, always working left to right, lower to upper, and I get my answer of 0.260. All right, that's it. So pretty easy. So the normal functions are a really cool function. It can only be used if you know your data follows a normal model, a normal distribution, unimodal and symmetric. And as long as it does that, then you need z-scores, right? You got to find z-scores and you got to be able to use your calculator to understand looking above or looking below, upper, upper, to, excuse me, lower to upper. And pretty cool function. Keep in mind, inputs, range of z-scores, output, the proportion of data that is in between those two z-scores. All right, that's it for my first video of the normal function.